Hollywood Studios. When I was last here in 2002, the park was still called MGM Studios and the park's icon was a giant sorcerer Mickey hat. It has only changed a lot since then. Boasting some of the most popular attractions in Walt Disney World, situated in some of its most immersive lands, the only real question we had on arrival? Where to start? We spent two days in Hollywood Studios. This vlog will show you what we did on the first of those days, but with hindsight, my overall advice would be make a plan. This is not a park where you can wing it. Every ride is popular, every attraction has some major queues, every restaurant is busy. Although Genie Plus can be a headache in this park, if you can make it work for you, it is definitely worth it. If you would like a full rundown of our experience with Genie Plus, let me know in the comments below. We've seen Donald's! Did he give you a hug? Hello little Star Wars girls. <laughs> We had a lightning lane booked for later in the day, so we decided to start off with a gentle amble in that direction. The first attraction we spotted, a meet and greet with everyone's favourite snowman, Olaf. Hollywood Studios isn't just famous for its rides, it is also home to some amazing shows, one of which is one of the few attractions that was actually there during my last visit. The Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. The shows are a great way to have a bit of a sit down with some amazing entertainment, and in this case, a snack. We took this opportunity to try the 50th anniversary funnel cake for the first time. A bizarre donut-y kind of confection served with ice cream and chocolate sauce. This was a hit with the whole family. The Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular is a classic attraction, and for good reason. Featuring a number of set pieces from the Indiana Jones movies, with a large cast of stunt performers, it is an awe-inspiring performance, regardless of whether or not you are a fan of the original films. Another classic attraction, Muppets 3D. Although I think it may have been updated a bit since I was last in the audience. <laughs> we stopped for a quick bite to eat in the Backlot Express. Great for classic fast food. We would visit here more than once. And now, the moment I've been waiting a long time for. We made our way to a galaxy far, far away and passed into the newest land, Galaxy's Edge, or Batu, as it should properly be known. The theming in this land really is out of this world. It has amazing scenery, incredible rides and wonderful character interactions. It was easy to see why it's such a favourite with park guests.
first lightning lane of the day was for Millennium Falcon's Smuggler's Run. This is one of the new rides, to me anyway. It's an interactive simulator ride unlike anything I've ever seen, where riders take on the role of either pilot, gunner or engineer and actually control the Millennium Falcon. It's like a living, breathing computer game. It was what I know of. Unfortunately, technical difficulty. Only got to see many ways. Another group of flight candidates. And this is on Naga Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering the opportunity of a lifetime. I need flight crews to transport this battle between you help the resistance. Then I did all. Yes, okay. What are you? The queue takes you through the Falcon. If you're a Star Wars fan like me, it will blow your mind. Has anyone taken their seasickness tablets? <laughs> I mean, can we actually crash? Can we like full on crash? On our ride, Freya and Poppy were our pilots, me and Dad were gunners, and I felt very, very sorry for our engineers. Ray spotted Poppy's Darth Vader Mickey ears. I think she'll be keeping an eye on us from now on. <laughs> For now, it's time to leave Batu and head to our next destination Toy Story Land. here is probably Slinky Dog Dash but we'll be leaving that for another day. We're here to use our next lightning lane on Toy Story Mania, another ride that frequently has 90 minute plus queues. Being one of the newer rides, Toy Story Mania has great accessibility, with a special loading area for wheelchairs so you could take as much time as you need and didn't feel like you were holding anybody up. If you want a full breakdown of accessibility in Disney World, check out my dad's channel, Rob and Sue's Video Diaries, where he's sharing his own content from the holiday. Welcome to Seafire. Mm. This is the show. This is my first 
then this little one is going to be quiet for the whole show. Otherwise, it's going to be in trouble. We're going to kick I'm, it out. <laughs> well, I've, I've been watching other. I've been watching like a recording. Of the, I don't know if we took it. Don't sue me, please, Disney. Um, <laughs> If they're meant to record it, like it looked pretty professional, but anyway, I've watched this show for ages and they've changed it a little bit, they've tweaked it oh, since like 27, 2007, and now I'm very happy about it. Run to Ireland. I'm so very happy for you, and I get to see you finally in real life. No longer frozen lemonade, now just lemonade. Cracking you, isn't it? Not a bad view, not a bad view. An old beggar woman came to the castle and offered him a single rose in return for shelter from the bitter cold. <laughs> If we're going to do this, then let's do it. And now, we invite you to relax, pull up a chair, as the dining room proudly presents... Your dinner! Heading back to Toy Story Land for the last ride of the day. We've got a lighting lane for Alien Spelling Sussers at 20 past 5 to 20 past 6, I believe. This is amazing. Look how good it is. Alfie! 